Primo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. South African defense vehicle systems company, Danel Land Systems, is marketing its new generation of mine-protected armored personnel carriers, the Casper NG2000, as a multi-role vehicular platform to suit peacekeeping, demining, and support operations in war-torn regions. Dylan Slater tells us more. The original Casper was born from a late 1970s requirement for a mine-protected troop carrier for the South African police to use during counter-insurgency operations in southwest Africa and during the border war with Angola. The now Land System senior manager Jack Holdenas explains further. The Caspers started as early as 1979. Many of the variants were built in the marks from Mark 1 up to Mark 4. As production ceases in the late 87s, Mechem get involved in a refurbishment and a remanufacturing of the vehicles. The, the need for the Casper vehicles was as such that no old vehicles were available for refurbishment. And then we realized that uh, there's a demand for a new vehicle. The NG2000 Casper has been developed around the current requirement for easy to maintain armored vehicles that can be adapted according to a client's specific needs. It is also required to be easily customizable to ensure compatibility between parts and components readily available in certain regions. The new generation, uh, 2000, it still retains the fundamentals of the old Casper. We just improved the Casper with better drivetrains and better armored steel, and then small little changes on the vehicle that make it more user friendly for the end user. In the Casper family, uh, as I said, it's the same as the old vehicles. We just add a few extra variants, which we're very proud of. And as what we also showcase to you is that uh, the potential is still there for more variants. One need to understand that there is a purpose for each vehicle. And uh, at this stage, the variants that you noticed here is what is normally on demand for a client. We are open to uh, give to a client other versions if we need to. And uh, we do open trust that for this new generation vehicle, we can still carry on for another 15 years. Though we work on a 10 year life cycle, but like the old vehicle, it was more than 30 years. And uh, we're quite confident at the stage where we are now, due to all the sales that we enjoy, which we're glad of, is that this vehicle can still go in for another 20 years. Yeah. The ability to take on a multitude of military and peacekeeping roles forms the backbone of the NG2000 Casper. The Null Land Systems has used this philosophy to extend the support capacity of the platform with several variants in standard and widebody formats, as well as with 4x4, 6x6 and even 8x8 drivetrain options. The Casper family, they all start with a troop carrier, which is the narrow body. And the troop carrier was in the older Caspers was also supported by logistical support variants, which were included at that time a cargo carrier or logistical support, uh, a fuel carrier, and that was basically the complement of the Caspers, and then it was added with the recovery vehicle, which do maintenance repair. When we relook at the new Casper, and out of the demand from clients, is that uh, we add extra vehicles. And the one that we start off after the troop carrier was the ambulance. And the ambulance is a wide body for the specific reason to give ample space for medical crew inside to work on a patient. There is more than enough stowage space. It's more new technology in the vehicle uh, in terms of lights, uh, oxygen systems, etc. And then we add the older concept of logistical support vehicle, just new, like a fuel carrier and a water carrier, which is the same. It shares the same common platform and you just fit at the back a module on the water or the, the fuel carrier variant, which we required. Then the logistical carrier is exactly the same. That makes it so unique that we had one platform where we can transport cargo, fuel and water. The NG2000 Casper also features firepower options, including the installation of weapons on the flatbed section of the double cab variants. These firepower options include either a 106 mm recoilless rifle, an 81 mm mortar system, anti-aircraft systems up to a caliber of 23 mm, a turret mounted machine gun up to 12.7 mm, or pintle mounted machine guns up to 7.62 mm. The weapons platform gives us lots of opportunities to fit. Indirect weapons, anti-aircraft weapons, even engineering type of weapons like mine breaching systems. If you not use it in that capacity and you want to use the double cab variant or the weapons platform variant reconnaissance, it can carry a crew of four as well as all your required logistics. And lastly but not least, 
added to this whole fleet is the recovery version. The heavy duty recovery or medium duty recovery, medium to heavy duty. And uh, that is 6x6. That is the latest that we've got in the variants. Quite suitable to support and maintain all the type of vehicles in the variant of the family on Casper Hill. Other news making headlines this week. The Concord judgment is a significant moment for the country, says Maimane. Democratic Alliance leader Musi Maimane said March 31st marked a significant moment in South Africa's democracy following the constitutional court's judgment in the Nkhanla saga. And so it's a significant judgment for all of us as a country and a victory for the constitution. I think further on from that is the fact that for those who are concerned about the state of democracy in South Africa, I think need to recognize the fact that what took place yesterday is a reminder that democracy only thrives if there are checks and balances and that power cannot be abused. That's Kruma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.